a lot better than our normal sync uh, claps go. So yeah, yeah, we're getting better at this. Yeah, we are yeah. indeed. Which is about time for episode seven. Hello, everyone watching at home. Uh, I would say America or Canada or anywhere, but let's face it, we know this isn't leaving like the you know the tri-state area. Um, <laughs> New York, New Jersey, PA power. Anyway, oh yeah. Uh, so, uh, jumping in real quick. We do have a question this week. Uh, I will screenshot it if you guys don't believe me. And I have I wanna... a question this week, too. I, I don't have any questions. I want I want to I want to call Dave out, but in the rare event that he's actually not lying, I would like to know what his question is. But... I'm too confused to have a question for the record. What's up? Well, I said, well... I, I'm too confused about what's going on to have a question for the record. Do you wish to go first or should I? Uh, I'll go first. Okay. So, uh, our question this week comes from Neris' son, Aiden. Oh, oh Aiden. hey, Aiden. And, uh, so, hi, Aiden. Uh, so he has a, a question. He wants to know if we've ever heard of or played the game Future Card Buddy Fight, and if we have what similarities it has to other card games we've played. Uh, it's called, I have so, what? heard of this game. Yeah. I've never played it. Uh... I haven't played it, but I've seen people play it, and I've um, actually read up about it. Uh, so I'm going to throw a few things out real fast, and then I'm going to explain the major problem I have with this game. And I'm not saying that this game's bad. What I'm saying is that I'm old. Like, yeah, I grew up with, like, Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh! So there's, like, rules that I know, like, Magic, you gotta put out Before mana Before you time. launch it... Yeah, before you launch into your gigantic explanation, I will say this does sound like the 1001 generic uh, Japanese card games that come into existence and burn out, chasing yeah. the eternal dragon that was first Magic the Gathering and then Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, kinda. I mean, there's so we're just some that find, Pokemon like... wasn't a thing, huh? Well, I mean, Pokemon that's Pokemon is a separate animal. Yeah. Pokemon is I a mean, solitary po game. The, the TCG yeah. is one thing, but Pokemon itself is a separate animal because the new releases of the Pokemon card game were dependent on the video games. Kinda, yeah. Um, so, basically the way that, that card games work is that at the very top, you have like the Pantheon, which is like Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh! And then, as you go down, it's like a pretty steep drop-off, and then you have different um, I do want to point out a slight irony, considering that Yu-Gi-Oh's origins as dual monsters was a reference to Magic the Gathering. Yeah. I think at one point, <laughs> didn't the original Yu-Gi-Oh manga actually want to use Magic the Gathering? And, like, Magic was like, no, you can't. So they're like, alright, fine, because we'll make our own game. Time, yeah, yeah, because at the time, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh was still basically, basically Darby the Gambler as a uh, main character of a manga. And mm -hmm. so, and so, wizard, and so, the guys who ran, owned Magic at the time were like, "What the fuck is this? We don't know." Yeah, so, so they indirectly created their own largest competitor. Oh yeah, <laughs> which is straight up just yeah. to to no extent. Uh, I find that hysterical. But basically, so one of the things about Magic: The Gathering and um, Yu Gi Oh is that like there's certain things like. Yu-Gi-Oh, you can have a set number of monsters on the field. Like, it used to be five. Now, I think in a lot of formats, it's three. Because they're trying to move on to speed duels or whatever the hell it is. I don't know. So, this one's kind of set up the same. Like, you have, like, your three monster zones. But you also have, like, a field card and then, like, your buddy monster. Where it's, like, when you start, like, uh, you, you have to flip both the the flag card and your... Uh, buddy monster over and say buddy monster raise the flag and I remember never seeing any players do that ever and when I was watching a tutorial video to kind of refresh my memory about that I'm like yeah no one's ever going to say that out loud like that just kills whatever remaining shred of dignity you might have <laughs> but uh, in terms of the gameplay I mean it's not too dissimilar so think of it like monsters having the same kind of like attack point value that monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh have but then life kind of works the way it does in Magic, where, uh, I mean, kind of, not really. Um, so, like, you have ten hit points, and I think each time you take a direct attack, you lose a hit point until, like, all ten are gone. Um, there's one mechanic about this game I really hate, 
and that's that whoever goes first gets to attack on their first turn, which feels like it's open for all kinds of abuse because I've seen like four different tutorial videos. You could do one damage if you go first. You could do like six if you get the right cards out. So you could do more than half your opponent's uh, health and damage before they even get to take their first turn. So it feels really, like, abusive, like, you know, oh, if you had, like, I guess summoning sickness, if you're the first person to go, and then whoever goes second gets to attack first, that would make more sense to me, but I I don't know. Um, It sounds like a case of literally too many cooks in the kitchen. I mean, that's the thing that I, I notice is that, like, so, because I grew up with different mechanics with Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh!, it's like, all right, when, when Yu-Gi-Oh! first came out, it's like normal summoning, tribute summoning, and fusion summoning. That's kind of a lot, but whatever. Eight years later, they introduced synchro summoning. Another four years later, it's exceed summoning. Another four years later, it's pendulum summoning. And then another four years after that, it's like, all right, forget pendulum summoning. Here's link summoning that says pendulum summoning doesn't matter. You know, so, it's fu- it's funny Tino brought up Pokemon. This sounds like the way that Pokemon introduces new features and then forgets about them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and again, I think by nature of the fact that I'm older and I don't really have time to learn a new card game, like, I have, you know, I, I don't even keep up with the card games I grew up with. Like, there's all kinds of weird, crazy mechanics in Magic the Gathering now that I see and I'm like, I don't know what kind of encyclopedia I need to figure out half of these terms because they don't always explain them. You but don't sure, need an encyclopedia. You need a fan made wiki that is kept meticulous by one dude. No, in the no, middle I, of nowhere. I, you know what? I, I all I need are the cards I already have for like the the one game I'll play every seven years. So what am I, gonna I do? will state that it's funny to me because I never got into TCGs because I didn't have the patience for them. Um. Ironically, though, I had the patience for tabletop role-playing games. Do you know what Magic the Gathering means to me? It means to me, since Wizards of the Coast bought it, a Dungeons & Dragons setting. Yep. They, there's literally a book called The Guildmaster's Guide to Ravenica, and Loxodon are now a playable race in D&D. I can so see that. So if you ever wanted to be an elephant, man. Yeah, there you that's go. a thing. So I will so. Say, I will say this, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh has become so fucking stupid over the years. Yeah, uh, and um, I I just I'm very dissatisfied with the direction that they took with the game. Pendulum summoning was already broken right from the gate. Uh, when it first came out, I didn't get into the meta at all. I just kept playing the same decks that I already were was playing before it was announced, mm-hmm. and I got totally stomped. And I'm like, dude, this is very, very broken. Because you can just keep repeatedly bringing monsters out. Like, you can just fill the field with five monsters and just start... Every turn, yeah. Every turn you can bring out five monsters and just start destroying your opponent. And I'm like, I don't know, man. This this sounds like you didn't think it out, think it through very well. And then, you know, I think like a year later they introduced Link Summoning. Or maybe it was two years. I'm I'm not sure. But Link Summoning felt like... Uh, oh, an even worse, not a worse mechanic, but it was. It was cer- worse. It, it was. It yeah. It was kind of so, worse. H- here's the thing: pendulum summoning broke the game because it made it go way too fast, and it was too easy for people to just spam big monsters all the time. Yeah. Link summoning was worse in the fact that oh, do you want to play any of your special cards? Yeah, you gotta buy these new special cards. Like technically, you yeah. didn't need oh, to God, buy. I have an analogy. Well, hold on, Dave. Dave, for hold what? on. I'll wait, explain hold on. in a second. I'll wait till you're done. With pendulum cards, you didn't need to buy pendulum monsters to keep using the same cards you already had. Mm-hmm. With link summoning, now it's like I get why they introduce it. They, they're trying to slow down pendulum summoning, but initially it slowed down everything where it's like, oh, you can't fusion summon, synchro summon, exceed summon. And then when they realized that people hated that, they said, okay, you don't, like, Link Summoning no longer affects those monsters, it just affects Pendulum monsters, which if they did that from the beginning, no one would have cared about Link Summoning, but then by the time they made that, so, 
by the time they made that second change, everyone already bought all these link monsters that they were using in combos. And they're like, well, I didn't have to buy all of these. I could have just stuck with like all my old monsters. So it, it was annoying. And now they're doing this speed duel thing, which is like, oh, you could just normal summon. Here's the thing. The new format, the newest format for Yu-Gi-Oh! So, Steve, how fast did Pendulum Summoning make the game? Uh, I mean, the game, an average game lasted maybe three, five, three to five turns. Right, so here's the thing. really bad. So, where Pendulum Summoning made the game, like, you could get a bunch of monsters out super quick. So, Konami was like, alright, we gotta introduce Link Summoning to slow down Pendulum Summoning. The very next mechanic they introduce after Link Summoning is, hey, this is called a Rush Duel. You can normal summon as many times as you yes. want during your turn. And and it was like, well, wait a minute. This is like Pendulum Summoning, except with less steps. It's like, yeah, exactly. It's like, didn't you just introduce a mechanic to slow this down? So, Will, the analogy to me that I hear, when because as Steve was describing this, all I could think of was, so in fighting games, there's this subset of fighting games called Hyper Fighters. Marvel vs. Capcom, the Marvel, the Capcom vs. series. The idea is that they trade out being balanced for being batshit crazy. And it's like, yeah, there's a bunch of unbalanced shit in there, but it's all awesome. And it's all like screen-filling supers and whatnot. However, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 has a number of what are called infinites in the game. Which are combos whose degradation timers allow you to just start the beginning of combo as the combo ends. And it's included, and it's the subject of a number of funny jokes. So all I envision when Konami is rolling out this pendulum summoning thing is, is some dude staring at like a small child and they go, Hey, yo kid, you want to learn how to do a fucking infinite? So, uh, so now, it's... So I don't know what that's a reference to. I, Wooly? I, I'll send you a video later. To, to Wooly? No, not Wooly. Wooly is referencing something else. <laughs> so I'll I find looked, the video. Give I me a second. Up, I, I just looked up the speed dueling thing. It looks really stupid. This is based on the Duel Links thing, right? On the mobile game? Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, this is really dumb. This is, this is actually even worse. <laughs> <laughs> This this this, this card it. game is getting so really 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 bad. Yeah, it's they're gonna have to have categories of which version of the card game you want to play. Like, do you want to play pre synchro summoning card stuff? It's like, oh boy, here we go. Uh, Yo, what is this nightmare you put into the chat? I'll so look, I'll have to look at this later. So that's the next topic, real quick. No, uh, it's not the next topic. We're yes, yes, it's because another... it's a follow up. Because it's a follow up. I have a question from another dedicated fan of our podcast. All right. Good, because I was about to basically say the only card game I know how to play is Rummy. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Stay that way. Spare I yourself. didn't understand Appreciate any of the last 10 minutes. <laughs> so, um, from our wonderful fan, Vicky, in John City, Philadelphia. Oh, All right. gosh. She writes, Why do you do this? <laughs> she has a question for you, Will. She says, when will Will stop being a coward and play Devil May Cry? <laughs> Wait, have you never played Devil May Cry? I play Devil May Cry. Okay, well then, what's the well, problem? Which one? Uh, the first one. You've only played the first one? Yeah, I, I, I never owned any of the Devil May Cry games, and I remember when we all lived at uh, Oxford Village, um... I don't remember who owned the first one, but I, I played it then. Well, the, the game was great. Really, well, the first game's really good. Two is garbage. Yeah. Uh, three is good. What do you mean? Four, Dave said two is, is the best one. Four is no, okay. you lying piece of shit. No, you said fuck two you. is the best don't, one. Don't you no, love running you. on walls? <laughs> fuck you. Hey, let me Eat infinitely shit, juggle asshole. this helicopter with guns. Oh, my God. <laughs> God, shut the fuck up. But yeah, no, uh, three is amazing. Four is unfinished, but good in its own way. It's still and good. And five is, what? It, I, it's still good. Four is still good. Yeah. Four is, I mean, four is still good. It's just, hey, did you like all that stuff you did with Nero? Are you prepared to do it backwards as Dante? Well, when I play Devil May Cry 5, I, like, haven't really, like, 
been keeping up with the series that much, and then I'm like, I don't remember the story at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was a really weird realization when I started playing. Yeah, all you need to know is all you need to know is play three and four, and you're good. Yeah, I I know. Well, I I played the one with the the other Dante dude or whatever the fuck DMC. Oh, God. So that, here's the thing. That game was the reboot trash. is <laughs> yeah, the reboot is trash. The reboot is trash because it was made by people who didn't understand Devil May Cry. But I will defend the reboot before I defend DMC2. The reboot if it was not Devil May Cry would have been an interesting action game. But because it's Devil May Cry, there's a set of expectations that it did not meet. DMC2 is a bad game because its development cycle was literal hell. DMC2 was so bad, it motivated the last director they brought on a multi-director project to go, Oh my god, this is a nightmare. I can't live with this on my conscience. I'm going to make the best Devil May Cry, Cry game ever afterwards. And he made three. Yeah. I still think that's so, the best one. So but as, how do as you answer as, the challenge from the lovely Vicky? As you know? far, well, as far as the rest of her question, uh, I'll play the rest of her games, uh, uh, the rest of the uh, Devil May Cry games, when she stops being five days younger than me. Hi, Vicky! <laughs> wow. You can buy, you can buy oh. the HD collection on Steam. I will report back your answer before she gets to hear this. Oh, uh, sure, 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 sure. Oh, sure. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure the rage will be strong. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so oh, everyone froze. Uh, you're still moving. Yeah, I'm on seeing our people end. moving. You're still good. So, Dave brought up something before his question. Oh, everyone's is, what is moving it, again. What is it that I uploaded in this chat? So I have a follow up. Yeah, I, I hey, guys. Yeah, I, I can't check any of the chat since I'm recording my screen. Remember. But. Remember when last podcast I told you about how I was making Beto go down the stairs, uh, my, my girlfriend's sister's dog? Oh, boy, yeah. 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 So, they listened to last podcast, and they got really upset <sighs> that we were trash-talking Beto. Oh, gosh. Uh, and, you mean and, Barco? Or, yeah, Barco, <laughs> and that I was not stopping you or correcting you when he was called a purse dog, and I said, well, I didn't disagree. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm sorry, Will's girlfriend's family. No, I don't apologize. This, I'm not, I'm no, no, no. Sorry. I have my opinions, yeah. and small dogs have no rights. So as the former, as the oh, former all right. the Pomeranian, I do not apologize. <laughs> so here's where it gets fun. What I sent you. So here's the thing. Uh, Natalie's sister Kate is a computer programmer. She set up her own Python script to start sending me text messages of photos of her dog, <laughs> along with uh, quotes taken directly from the podcast. So you'll see in the chat, and the reason why I gave the screenshots is so Tino can add them and just show you what's going on. But it'll be things like, thank you for subscribing to Purse Dogs, an hour a day of dogs with absurd Napoleon complexes. Thank you for subscribing to Purse Dogs, an hour a day of little dogs who live to pick fights. Yes. Uh, I, 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 you are amazing. I would like to meet wow. you and shake your hand. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> then I found I, out. I bow to this level of trolling. This now, is impressive. Now, not only did I find out that it took her an entire weekend to program this whole thing. So she's putting a lot of effort into this. Uh, but she also, uh, paid money to get this thing going so the level of dedication <laughs> put into trolling me now hold on you're trolling will it's worth it it's well, worth hold on, it don't hold ever on, forget hold that on. oh my hold god on. oh my fucking god i i oh, counter trolled i oh counter trolled no. oh no this so is here, what i is. did your counter troll can nowhere be nowhere near as good as this literally setting up a new service oh yeah just oh, to fuck with you oh yeah you you think so dave hold on Hold yeah, on. let's see what you fucking did. I want to know. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna send it in the chat so that everyone can look at it. But basically, well, so I when can't. I started, I'm recording the screen. Well, I know you can't. That's why I'm gonna describe it. Okay. Um, but basically, when I saw that I was starting to get spammed with uh this stuff, lost your audio, Will. I. I think What's you're up? having connection problems on your end, Dave, because Will hasn't stopped. I lost Tino's audio. Yeah, I lost yeah, everyone's I'm, audio. Give I'm me a second. Good. I'm All right. here. Uh, Tino, so... give your head yes or no if I should disconnect. <laughs> okay, I'll be back in a minute. So basically what happened was, uh, when I initially got signed up for this, 
I typed in unsubscribe. I can hear you again. Good. And it it successfully unsubscribed me from this. <laughs> and then Natalie and I had like a two hour text message ar- argument, not like a real one. <laughs> And she's like, you should resubscribe for at least a week. I said, why, sh- why should I? She's like, because I said so. I'm like, when did you become the boss? You're, you're not in charge of me. So, okay, that is actually a good counter Yes. Anyway. So you're then. Still, you still have bitch in your heart, but you did it well. So here's the thing. I resubscribed to, to getting these updates mainly because I have to applaud the effort she put into trolling me. Oh, um, oh yeah, no, no, yeah. I mean, like, look, like, this look, is glorious. Many people. I, I, I'm not even porn. mad. Many people I, like. Many people use their nerd skills for evil. Kate has used her nerd skills for good. Indeed. Yeah, I mean. Also, trolling will is also, certainly a righteous cause. I use my mostly yeah. for evil. I also love that. Who came up here with the term purse dogs? I'm trying to remember. Uh, oh God, was that Paris, me? I think it Paris. was. It might have been. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, god i oh man oh, but this, this was so fashioned good. in like the best way so i i mean shout out to that that was really well done on her we part. applaud you well done yeah, that's pretty, you, you, that's you pretty know funny. you know that that this is actually really encouraging to me because it tells me that our podcast is having a real influence on the world <laughs> you know because now as a result will is getting troll texted you know, that's yeah, not something yeah. that we could have done even five years Will ago. Will also makes an effort to antagonize <laughs> his significant that, That's the family, benchmark so. of success for you, Tino. Yes, yes it is. I mean, the, like I said, the All thing right. is Will makes an effort to antagonize the family of his significant other. <laughs> so. I don't. I stick up for Mr. <laughs> when he gets trolled hard by Kate. Who? Natalie's dad. I stick up for him when, when oh, oh. Natalie's sister. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Yeah. For some reason, I kept thinking as in your next door neighbor, and I was like, wait, no, that's not his last name. Yeah, no. That's not it. <laughs> now, that'd be quite an interesting last name. Uh, <laughs> we might have to bleep the last names, by the way, Tino. I don't want that going out. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, no identifying information. Yes, let's that's bleep. Why I didn't Tino, say, let's bleep those last names. Last name. I, I messed up. <laughs> You're the lawyer. You're supposed to have a, you're sp- you're supposed to be on top of this. Yeah. You know, as a guy who has met many lawyers over the last year, you'd no, be surprised don't. how dumb we could be. I said supposed uh, to be. No, I didn't said R. So, anyway, that all being said, <clears throat> because I don't think there's going to be another episode before May 7th, I think we all need to have a serious discussion about mm-hmm. the, the tall vampire mommy that everyone is uh, sipping yes. over. Uh, okay, so when this joke started, it was funny. It was like, aha, we've been inside so long, we're all thirsty over the giant vampire lady and people who aren't are cowards. And then Capcom made the standee, which showed exactly, they knew exactly what they were doing. And this went from being funny to absolutely hilarious. Yep. And I didn't we watch the stand. trailer. <laughs> we stand for Lady Dimitrescu. Maybe you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I want to point out, first off, a meme that was really funny. Uh, I, I'm sure everyone has seen the uh, the trailer, or if not, I'll just describe it to you real fast. Um, there's a trailer out where Lady Dimitrescu picks up her makeup table and throws it across the room. And when she does that, you get a really like clear view of her butt. Oh, yeah, it's in your face. Boy, did Which Capcom impre- make this thing shapely. Yeah, so it's actually double impressive because the implication is that your character is hiding and spying on her, and you're terrified of being discovered, and wow, she can't feel your breath on her ass? Well, no, because you're out the window. She's in the room. You're technically outside while she's in her room doing this. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, Capcom's just leaning into it super hard. Yeah, so here's the thing. Someone took a screenshot of basically when she's, like, in the stance getting ready to throw her dresser where her, like, her butt is really pronounced. And they photoshopped it so there's an image of Chris Redfield from Resident Evil 5 when he's doing the boulder punch. So it looks like he's (laughs) punching her butt. Wow. And I don't know why, but as I was coming back from lunch today... 
I get back to my office and I see that meme right as I'm sitting down. <laughs> and I lost control for a good 20 minutes and just sat there laughing at my desk. <laughs> so oh my God. that's that's what I want to do to set the tone. Uh, but I want to talk about uh, the simping thing for Lady Dimitrescu. Um, Is that the topic for tonight? Yes. You know, uh, that and Resident Evil 8 in general, I want to talk about that as well, because that's coming out on May 7th. Um, and I don't think we're going to do another episode before then. So I figured let's talk about it now to be kind of timely. Okay, well, can, so, can, yeah. I get, can I get can I get something out of the way first? Sure. I I didn't entirely enjoy Resident Evil Seven, and and I'll tell you why. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's jump in. All right. So, uh, I I greatly appreciated that they went first person view. I think that you know just starting with the positives of the game. So the first person view was uh, a very bold move by Capcom. And, you know, I, I think it works really well in terms of setting the, the atmosphere and the tone. Uh, and, you know, uh, it was great for VR, too, which I haven't tried, but I would like to at some point. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I got a PSVR uh, that it's being lent to me by a buddy of mine. It's technically Mike's, you know? Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and, and He lent I, it to me for Ace Combat. I could lend it to you. Uh, you can come and try it, Steve. Well, I, I have a quest, so I'm, I'm good. I can play the Steam version. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, I, I think they, there was a lot of things that they got right with Resident Evil 7. However, yeah, I, I didn't care about Ethan at all. I didn't care about Jack. I didn't care about the family. The family is, it, it just seemed very disconnected from the franchise as a whole. Like, I guess I, 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 I realized that they had to try something new in order mm -hmm. to stop it, for, stop that train of that train wreck of, that is Resident Evil 6. and just like back but themselves then it just corner. loops back into yeah. resident evil's normal tropes like yeah. um like the thing is the family turns out to be connected to a giant pharmaceutical science conspiracy the last levels of the game are spent in a sterile hallway style environment yeah but that that was just a stretch you know they they had to like link it back somehow but i don't think they did it in the best way yeah in my opinion oh uh, oh no listen i listen so I would normally defend Resident Evil 7, but it has its major flaws. So here's yeah. here's the other thing, and I want to just throw a few things out there. Uh, based on the fact that Capcom literally didn't know what direction to go in with Resident Evil 6, uh, to build on Steve, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit some positives of this game. I like the fact that they decided, let's have a steady uh, direction with this game. And I like kind of what they did and, and how it was like the same as, uh, I think, The Force Awakens, like uh, the seventh Star Wars movie, the, the first reboot, or not, uh, yeah, the first sequel movie for Star Wars. Yes. Where that one very heavily mirrors Star Wars and New Hope. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciated that because let's take a, f uh, a formula that's familiar and just add a new twist to it. And try to make it our own. I like that because it was a way to try to link it to the the older movies. So I liked and how Capcom knew what they were doing when they when you press the buttons and to get into Lucas's stupid yes. lab thing. Yes, and it makes the exact same sound. The exact same right. sound. You're in this big house that you know is like yeah, you're it messed takes up place and trapped mostly in a single mansion. Yep, I like that a lot. You could go out to Marguerite's little bug house. And that's like going to the guardhouse in the original Resident Evil. They have a lot that mirrors the very first Resident Evil game. And they have like six enemy designs and that's the entire game. Yeah, well, the other thing too is that I, I want to say a few more positives. Um, I didn't mind Ethan. I actually did kind of like him because he's supposed to be an everyman. And I like the fact that it's not completely mirroring the first game where here's an entire cop team going in to get slaughtered. It's like, all right. They they gave him a believable enough thing for why he'd be there. Mm. Um, so I didn't mind that. Uh, I love the weapon options in 7. I think it's some of the best in any Resident Evil game. Um, I, I really like the design of it. I like that the shotgun can't be upgraded to have like 30 shotgun shells in the tube. Like, you're really just stuck with the options you have. But the weapons that you're given are fun to use. They feel nice when you're you're firing them. Yeah, for the and, for the six enemies that are in the game. 
Right. You know no, no. I mean? Well, hold on. I'll, <laughs> I'll get to the bad parts in a second. And the, mm-hmm. the, the other thing that I really did like in a way uh, of all of the enemies or bosses, uh, I think Marguerite is my favorite one uh, because she's the creepiest. She's mm-hmm. the absolute creepiest. And she was creepiest. creative. She, she forced you to creative. fight outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. creative, creepy, um, and, and quite honestly, she was the one enemy in the game that actually frightened me legitimately which is, I'm not talking about, like, you know how in the beginning when Jack's chasing you and you're not armed, so that's scary. It's like, well, once you know what to do, it's fine. Even when I'm fully stocked up with flamer fuel and shotgun shells and pistol ammo. Yeah, Marguerite's scary. Marguerite like, can still scare me, and I appreciate that. She's a very well-designed enemy. So before you get to the flaws, I do want to chime in here and just say my piece. Mm-hmm. I appreciate RE7 solely on the fact that it made RE Engine viable yeah in that's another Capcom good thing Project. yeah without re7 we don't have dmc5 we don't yeah. have the monster hunter rise mm-hmm. we don't have all these amazing games that are running on capcom's new proprietary engine we don't have which, resident which evil 2 and 3 Unreal. Remake. it is amazing yeah it's it's a really good engine that, i that, love that, it that, oh, them's yeah. all them's, them's almost fighting words but uh ha- from experience i know how tino, hard it is to I use unreal so <laughs> tino i'm sorry so monster hunter world which is the monster hunter game that was on ps4 and xbox one and the pc has horrible frame drops it's running on like some late version of unreal yeah uh, monster uh, hunter rise the new game on the switch has a solid 30 proprietary well, that, engines that can... will proprietary engines will always have the advantage because they're they're made for the games that you, you want to code them for uh, unreal is just way too much of a scope it's kind of like android phones like android mm-hmm. the operating system you have to make it for every phone and be compatible with every phone but then things break all the time because stuff falls through the cracks well that's how you know i will be eternally grateful to unreal but you and I should sit down, and I should just show you some of the textures in Devil May Cry Five sometime. Well, I mean, that sounds like more of an optimi- optimization issue than anything else. But I, I, I see what you're saying. It, it, you're, you're right about you know purpose building an engine for specific games to overcome mm-hmm. the limitations. I'm, I, I'm mainly just saying that because I use Unreal to run our, uh, our D and D sessions. Our D and D. Tino has created the greatest. Tino has turned the battle maps from just being a JPEG into being. A JPEG, and here's digital minis and tokens to represent the oh. monsters, and I am eternally grateful for him, Tim, for doing that. But I mean, because, now, um, because I mean, we can't meet great. in person. We can't meet now, in person, so... Now, imagine, like, <laughs> now yeah. imagine what Tino could do. With that being said, Will, tell us why Resident Evil 7 is also a flawed game. Sure. Uh, before boy, I get to, isn't it? Before I, before I get to that, imagine what Tino could do if he was doing that with the Resident Evil engine. Ah! <laughs> well, All right, so but, the um, issue is that um, the Resident Evil engine is great, but it requires a lot of work to get running. Well, you you can use you can use the magic knife. Thank and you for start tearing yeah. through. Yeah, people. <laughs> yeah. Tino's Tino's figure in Dave's well, D session. Just have a knife and and four hundred frames per second just slashing people. I pull out. I pull out a oh, no, that's, right. how, to, that's another reason why that engine's great. I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention we wouldn't have the Resident Evil two re, two and three remakes without. I said that. Yeah, he said that. Yeah. So yeah. so I did say that. No, I oh, said that. I'm going crazy. Will, Will said no, me. I yeah, said I, that. Oh, Will said that. Good. I'm not going crazy. Not you! My beard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, here's why Resident Evil 7 is flaming garbage. Uh, I hate the family. I'm sorry. They suck. Uh, Jack is supposed to be like the pursuer enemy, the same way Mr. X or the Nemesis are. And okay, I get that. Uh, but there's a big difference between Mr. X stomping down the hall or Nemesis booking it after you, uh, and then Jack just wandering around the hall going, <laughs> I'm gonna get you, like some stupid drunk birthday clown. Um, well, I don't like that the game is heavily scripted. It's yeah. like, you know, everything is like yeah. event based, you know? I don't like that you have to fight and kill Jack like 8 million different times. Yeah. Uh, like he he never dies. Uh, Controversial and everyone... opinion. Jack is better in the DLC where he doesn't talk. You mean I, where he comes I, back I, to life again after getting injected with the cure for the mold again? 
Yeah, where he comes back to life and you're in the DLC where you get to punch him because you're playing as his psycho No, brother. I don't care. No, screw that. That, that. that is garbage DLC. We will talk about the DLC when we get there. Right, but, but, but here's, so here's my thing. Qu- question, about uh, this, question about this cure. Was it made by Johnson & Johnson? It, so that might know, be why it didn't work. It might have been. <laughs> AstraZeneca. <laughs> oh, Astra, AstraZeneca is more apt. Johnson and Johnson is uh, just like just. That's more the T virus. That's where T virus speed. That's what they're really working on right now. Um, Pop, hey, hey! I hope that you're watching this after in the distant future when COVID is but a memory. Let's hope. I, I just uh, thought it, I just thought it was a relevant joke because uh, you know Philadelphia or Pennsylvania or one of the two suspended the use of Johnson and Johnson temporary. Yeah, it was, no, it was the Philadelphia US, uh, today. The FDA did. Yeah, oh, the, the FDA, FDA did. did. Okay, I thought it was just mm-hmm. Philly for some reason. Yeah, they, yeah. F- the FDA was like, Oof. okay, six cases, it may be six cases out of seven million, but we don't want anything. Well, Philly but put out their own zero, announcement so today, that's, too. That's like, insane odds. And it's probably was. related to a drug that they took. That, yeah, that's... Like, yeah, or some kind of health that, condition. Odds yeah. that low, It's it's got to be... Like that's like statistical noise at that point. Yeah, pe- people people play the lottery every day with odds like that. I mean, I don't really know what to tell <laughs> yeah. you. Listen, I like I said they did it. I didn't say I agree with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, anyway so mo- moving that... on to more yeah. fun things. <laughs> so so yeah. Here's the other thing. Aside from that, uh, everyone likes to talk about how Resident Evil Seven is this big horror game. The horror kind of dies the second that. Uh, and I'm just going to describe something that happened to me during my very first playthrough of Resident Evil 7. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a part where you have to initially run away from Jack, then you get away from him, and then you get, like, a little breather. Then he comes back, and you have to do something to, like, get to the next part of the house. Well, as I was trying to figure this out, uh, Jack was always right behind me. So I get to the room where I had to figure out what I had to do. So, like, let's say the room is, like, right here. Jack would come in after me. I'd have to go all the way loop around the house to get another ten seconds to look in another part of the room. And then Jack (laughs) would come in right after me again. And I hated it. And then I realized, eventually I figured out that if you grab this videotape item and you put it in the VCR as he's chasing you, by the time you're done the videotape, it resets him. So you have all the time you need to search that room and do what you need to do. Otherwise, he's just going to keep following you around, and you're never going to accomplish what you need to accomplish. Yeah. Uh, that is, sounds like you broke the scripting, which is something yeah. that... Which so you have to break the scripting common. in order to get, yeah. you know, in order to play the game, which, again, I don't like. <laughs> uh, the horror's not it, really like in the game. Out, people learned how to do that with Mr. X, but they had to do it in frame-perfect instances. Yeah. Like, you had to open the doors at exactly the right time to make it work. Sounds yeah. like the DDLC tra- strategy to me. Break the script in order yeah. to play the game. It well, yeah. Basically, it, it it just it didn't. It wasn't a fun experience. I, I also didn't see the horror in having a chainsaw duel with him. I mean, that got a little ridiculous. It's fun. Yeah, no, let's, that's how but Resident Gears Evil of War excels. Yeah. yeah, it's Gears well, of War. You know, you know, I I was reminded of Gears of War when I did that play. I'm like, wow, this, this yeah. seems familiar. So Resident Evil excels when it does, in my opinion, lean into the stupid shit. Because those are some no, of the most not memorable here. moments. Not here. I don't, I don't agree with that. I, I, I mean, don't think... No, I, I'm saying this didn't succeed. Yeah. Yeah. I think... I, once again, I'm going to be that asshole who says that the, uh, the end of Zoe DLC does lean into the stupid shit successfully. Yeah, I could kind of see that. I um, guess. But we'll get there when we get there. Yeah, so... Part of what annoyed me about this game, too, uh, and I'm not going to go through every flaw that it had, uh, but I'm going to cut to the biggest one right now. Uh, well, hold on. One flaw, then I'll cut to the biggest one. Um, the fact that uh, I think the son, Lucas, like, mm-hmm. they build him, like, he's, at one point, he's literally on a videotape telling Ethan, you're going to have to come through me! And literally, you just never fight him. And then he's saved for, like, Chris's campaign in the free yeah. DLC, yeah. which I'm like... I'm gonna have to go through when when I when I when I download from PSN, like is that how this works? <laughs> um, but that's not even. So here's the biggest flaw with this entire game for me. They make a super hateable character central to you getting the good ending. Mia oh, yeah. is a 
flaming bag of garbage. She is she awful. She is literally working for the umbrella equivalent in the game. Yeah. She, Spoilers, by the way. Yeah, she's for, hot garbage. Uh, uh, literally. A five-year-old game. Here's the thing. Every time you encounter her, Ethan's like, Mia, what's going on? I don't have time to tell you, but let me have time to tell you that daddy's coming. First off, guys, if you're married and your wife ever calls another man daddy, you you're might want to get a divorce. Why, why did she go to some babysitting job? Yeah, that's <laughs> so just, stupid. Wait, first what? off, babysitting job? Like, who's believing that? In, in, in the bayou? Let, 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 let's just be... Uh, no, no. Not so, in fairness, so Tino's looking really confused. She doesn't actually go to a babysitting job. What she's babysitting is, is a bio girl weapon. that's the bioweapon. Yeah. Well, I, I assumed it was an excuse for committing an and, affair, but that's actually worse. <laughs> Yeah, and in the and in the big twist, the Baker family, the beings that have been antagonizing you for the entire game, are simply the victims of this bio weapon. Oh, and you yeah. encou- and you encounter them in a deep mind palace situation where it's like, okay, we're sorry, we've been attacking you, we've been taken over by this crazy little girl and the fungal spores she's emitting. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the one area where I will say Lucas it has more of a redeeming quality than the rest of the family. Because you find out that he was never infected or something, or he cured himself, and that yeah, no, and he's just an asshole. Yeah, he, he so just he's a just dick. a straight villain. Which I'm like, you know what? Thank you. I hate the sympathetic. He villain was trope. the most interesting part of that game, and and he's gone in a DLC. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, I still think Marguerite is the best boss in that game. Yeah, but she's good from a mechanical perspective. As yeah. a character, she's just another victim of the exactly. fucking... Exactly. And, right. and that annoys... Of the fucking mushroom girl. I cannot stand the sympathetic villain trope. I'm sick of it. It's hey, Itachi slaughtered my entire family, and like he, you know, left the village and became a super assassin for the, the worst I'm evil ninjas ever. I'm stop you right there, because if we start discussing Naruto, we will be here all night. Well, no, I'm just giving an example. <laughs> I'm not going into a Naruto Fair rant. Enough. I don't want to talk about Naruto. Oh, it turns out Itachi was a good guy after all. My, my heart aches for him. Ugh, enough Itachi of that. Itachi was a good guy after all, and eugenics is the right answer. Yeah. Thank you, Naruto. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it It is not a good series. No. Uh, anyway, back to Resident Evil. <laughs> you okay there, Tino? I, the, the just, every flaw. single thing we've talked about is stuff I I have absolutely no experience <laughs> with. <laughs> That's why I love seeing oh, his face. I'm the normie tonight, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Tino, Tino, Tino has this look on his face like like he's a kitten seeing a laser pointer for the first time. Like he's like his eyes are wide. He's trying to dart everywhere and keep up with everything. Like, Tino, he has no ha- idea Tino have you never played a Resident Evil game? No. I no. I watched a playthrough of the Resident Evil remake. And then I started mm. watching a playthrough of the Resident Evil 2 remake. Um, okay. And then I had to actually do other things. <laughs> okay, well... Fair enough. Um, we, should, we should bring that to uh, karaoke. Resident <laughs> Evil 1, let's go, boys. Yeah, I'm, I'm game. <laughs> uh, I think at some point on our YouTube channel, we should just start doing Let's Plays as a group. Our, our This channel, the one that we upload the podcast on, and then I think... One of the first ventures we need to do is have Tino play the different Resident Evil games while we sit there. And... Someone needs to be there to guide his hips because those games can be stupidly obtuse. That's times. why I'm saying we're uh, all I mean, going to yeah, get together well, like, and do this. I was watching. I, mean, I played all of them. Well, like the 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 playthrough that I saw was was Game Grumps doing that, and yeah, they were like breezing through it because you know they already knew where everything was, and I was yeah. watching him do stuff, and I was like, okay. If I was trying to figure this out by myself, it would take me like eight hours. So, yeah. Yeah, so well, I mean, the, that is literally the result of this game has been around 20 years and the people who love it, it's designed to be played over and over again because it's designed for you to, you're supposed, there are literally, uh, there's literally a gameplay loop idea in that, okay, this runs fucked. Yeah. I'm going to explore as much as I can before I die again. Oh, yeah. wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Which is funny because later games extrapolated that. My favorite version is the one that runs in Dark Souls, which is okay, I'm out of healing items. How far can I get before I die? So, yeah. um, but back to but the original thing yeah. is so Mia is literally like forced on you if you want the good ending because at one point you're forced to make a choice of who to save with the vaccine. And she dies anyway. Yeah, kinda. 
Kind of. Uh, well, yeah. no, that's if you choose Zoe. No, Mia dies anyway. No, she doesn't make it to the end. Yeah, she does. If you if you oh. pick Mia, she's at the end of the game in the helicopter going Ethan. Like as she rolls her dead lifeless doll eyes at you. Um, I forgot about that. I thought yeah. that was a re- you reminded me of that, and I am pissed. By the way, oh god. So on top of that, so basically at one point you're forced to save either. Mia, the bioterrorist who lied to you, yes. disappeared yes. for three years, called another guy daddy, and literally continues to not tell you what she was doing, or Zoe, the the southern chick with a sexy accent who actually tries to help you escape because the Baker's recognize- Zoe gives a lot of credit to me because she recognizes my family is dead. Yeah. Like, she sees her family infected and she's like, they're gone. They're fucking gone. But if you they choose Zoe... Enti- the last time this shit happened, they nuked an entire city. They're gone. Yeah, but if you choose to save Zoe, they both die. And it's, will- you, you get the bad ending. It's not like, well, I, if I choose to save Zoe, and I play well enough, I'll get the good ending by saving them, and if I don't play well enough, I get the bad ending because they die. No. Zoe, die bad. Mia, <laughs> good. Pick Mia. It's like, wow, thank you, Capcom, for the illusion of choice in having to save a bioterrorist from this nonsense. And by the way, hold on. I'm sorry, that's the second biggest flaw in the game. Because it turns out, everyone could have escaped without getting vaccinated. You can literally prove that Ethan is infected with the mold the entire time, and he never uninfects himself. Mm -hmm. Because, first off, that green liquid goo that you pour all over yourself, the medical juice, that only works on you if you're infected with the molded, according to the game uh, data from this whole thing. You're right. Oh, fuck. So, and, and you use it right when you get in the house. Yeah. So oh, you're yeah, immediately only, infected as soon as you get not in. Not only does he use it right when he gets in the house, he uses it in a mo- way that is impossible to recognize the lack of use of it. Like, yeah. you can't obscure if I say, oh, he just popped in from a menu. No! You use it to reattach your leg after it gets cut off. Yeah, and your arm. <laughs> and on top of that, by the way, so, here's the thing. Here's the other bit of proof that you didn't need the vaccine to escape. You inject it into Jack, and it's supposed to kill him because he's in- infected and so far gone. And he just shows up in the next DLC anyway. Like, oh yeah, I just, I slept that off. That was nothing. He slows up in the next DLC as a slot monster made mostly of plant matter. Yeah. Can we talk about that DLC? The no. DLC actually? I, w- I want to go to Resident Evil 8. We'll, we'll, we'll have another episode where we just bash Resident Evil 7. <laughs> I just want to, just, can we just do broad strokes? Because there All is right, broad strokes. Seven. Broad strokes. So I'm going to do these out of order. I want to talk about End of Zoe, which is Capcom being like, okay, we know you didn't like choosing Mia. We're sorry. Here, Zoe's now an animu princess of this growing angelic white fungus. You play as Jack's brother, who's an ex-boxing champion, who now lives as a hillbilly in the swamp. Your primary means of fighting the monsters is literally punching them to death. It is punch out Resident Evil. I enjoy it on the sheer stupidity and the fact that at the very end, you get a super punch from a... Uh, from a uh, yeah. exo arm. So- sounds like uh, Resident Evil Florida Man edition. It effectively is, it except it's set in Louisiana. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, I know. I, as much perfect. as I hate everything that's been said between Dave and Tino, it is a hundred million percent accurate. Um, <laughs> yeah. The other DLC. So a lot of what is clear from the original game is that the goal of Capcom was to return Resident Evil to its survival horror roots. Ethan is a disempowered character. He does not know how to hold a gun well. And you, if you watch the way that his animations are set up, it's clear he does not know what he's doing when he's doing it. This is a dude. This is not a trained police officer or soldier or super spy. He's a guy. And it's, and it's clear that it, they're trying so hard, bless them, so hard to get back to the Idaho horror idea. And then they fail horribly. And as if in concession to that failure, the DLC Not a Hero, where Chris fucking Redfield, wearing goddamn tech marine armor, 
shows up and you run through a series of challenge rooms to kill the only interesting character in Resident Evil 7. Yeah. Um, as a... Yeah. As a Working quick, for a blue umbrella version of the Umbrella Corporation. As, as a quick aside, the, the Chris Redfield that you play as, like, if we're going to compare him to every other Chris Redfield, every other Chris Redfield from, like, Resident Evil 1 to 6 is, like, the Coca-Cola version of Chris Redfield. Uh, the, the Chris Redfield that you play as in Resident Evil 7 is, like, the Diet Mr. Pibb version of Chris yeah. Redfield. <laughs> new voice uh, actor, new model. It makes no sense. I'll... Uh, it was thought when we saw him in, in RE7 proper uh, before the DLC, oh, this is a dude who's lying about being Chris Redfield. Yeah. There's no fucking... Oh, it's actually him. That no. is really disappointing. Uh, so, all right. So that DLC aside, the broad stroke's gone. Uh, I Let's wanna... go to Resident Evil fucking 8. Yeah, so I want to start by saying this. For anyone who hasn't seen the trailer, it starts off with... There's a scene of Chris Redfield literally pumping five handgun rounds into Mia. And if she actually gets killed and stays dead, this is the best Resident Evil game ever. Because it gets rid of Mia. Except, I'm really sad, dude, because you know the next scene is going to be Mia literally doing the vampire raise up. Well, no, here's the thing. If Mia survives, this will be the worst Resident Evil game ever, more so than Gun Survivor. Damn. I like Gun Survivor. <laughs> you know, that explains a lot about you, Steve. Um, I know. I know, it does. So, Tino, so, just so you understand oh, wait, when people talk about I remember people, my name is Ark Thompson. Resident, my friend, Resident Leon Evil, Scott yeah. Kennedy, sent me to this Raccoon City clone town to investigate. I never said the story so. was good. I just said the game is fun. Yeah? Is yeah. it? Yeah. All right, well, 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 what, do you well, like, well, you like the Crow video game too, Steve? I, I like Will, the fact that you can't really... I gotta explain something to Tino. <laughs> so, Tino, Resident Evil is a long-running franchise with dozens upon dozens of games in it. Some of them are really, really good, and a lot of them are trash. I don't know what you're talking about. They are all good. Outbreak. Um. Anyway, Outbreak, Outbreak is great. great. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Am I thinking about Outbreak or am I thinking about something else? Are you you're talking about thinking, are you Umbrella talking about, Core? Uh, maybe. Yeah. What? Are you talking about Umbrella? Uh. What is Umbrella it? Umbrella Core. Um, Umbrella. That was it. Umbrella Core. Yeah. Umbrella, Umbrella Core is garbage. Um. No, Umbrella Core is crap. Sorry. Why did I confuse that with Outbreak? Dude, the, it's on like I, a totally different yeah. generation of console too. Like I'm two sorry, generations. There's too many fucking. Past. There's too many games. I am so sorry. As, hey, as I a went quick there aside, once. as as a quick aside, by the way, I just found out today that in Resident Evil Three, there's hit or Resident Evil Three remake. There's hidden dialogue that kind of confirms that Outbreak is canon because you hear someone talking about being stuck in the kitchen of Jay's bar with three other survivors. One of whom is yeah. wounded, and I'm like, <gasps> oh god, no, yeah, that was. I'm sorry, I thought that was a different game. Oh god, yeah, I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, it's the one. Yeah, it's the multiplayer yeah. one. Yeah, you can good, play it online. That's a good it's game. Dope. It's the one where you actually play the giant tyrant battle that the U.S. Marines have that you yeah. find the aftermath of in Resident Evil Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Outbreak is a good one. Shit, my apologies. That's I right. was thinking about Umbrella Chronicles. No, Umbrella Core. Uh, Umbrella Chronicles is a Umbrella good game. Umbrella, Umbrella, Umbrella Chronicles Core. is good, too. Fuck, <laughs> Fuck my ass! God damn! You know listen, what, Steve? Steve, we're going to have to educate Tino and Dave on the Resident Evil games. Listen, Resident Evil... Like, in my case, it is a re-education, sir. Okay, Operation don't, Raccoon don't City is me. trash. I'm just... I'm just don't uh, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push back on that one. Steve. You're noting down really? the time code, so yeah. Okay, here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. The gameplay is bad. Yes. The gameplay is bad, but the game itself is fun, and I like the what if scenario of all this shit happening in Ra Raccoon City. Yeah. Guys, let's you know put I, down I the time code so he knows to bleep. Oh me. no, I'm I'm noting down I'm noting down uh, every time you you get one of the games wrong when you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn, damn, this yeah, stab me right in the heart. All right, but anyway, back I, I to, to Resident Evil Eight because I'm on the wrong end of a webcam. But whatever. So I've I've damn. played the demo a bit. Um, mm -hmm. I, so initial impressions. I like Lady Demetrescu and her three daughters as the villains of this game. 
Yeah. I hope that they don't get the sympathetic villain path. I hope instead it's something like how uh, Salazar and Sadler were in Resident Evil 4 where they chose to just get infected with whatever it is. I think it's the mold again. Uh, I, no, I think she's. I think she's a tyrant. I don't think so. I think it's a mold thing because uh, there's something about how Resident Evils uh, seven, eight, and nine are going to form their own trilogy. Okay, so so as a as an outsider, I heard something about Lady Dimitrescu being like a vampire or something. Yeah, but, well, at one point, so there's a story we here. Th- we Hold think on. that's what it's going to be. No, no, no. There, there's it. There is some confirmation in game, kind of at least in the demo. Because you get to what's basically a wine cellar, but at one point, whoever you're playing as, it's heavily implied to be Ethan, uh, he doesn't taste, I think he smells the liquid, and he's like, that's not wine, but it's red. Hmm. So it's heavily so, implied to be blood. Yeah. So it's like so they, it's going to be cool blood, light. but it's really going to be like tea virus juice or something. No, or because some there's, before you get to the wine cellar, there's a dungeon where they have bloodletting tools and literally torture racks and other stuff where there's blood, dry blood coating but the equipment. To, but to explain to Tino, there's not actually a supernatural element. This is all going to be, it's all like at the end of the yeah, game, at some point real. close to the, yeah, at the end of the game, it, at some point it's going to be like, oh, they're all lab experiments or something. So, well, so let, let me let me let me get this straight. We have uh, technically we, we, no, because technically in Resident Evil, werewolves exist, and not just from Resident Evil Eight. There's literally a manga where before the raccoon, you know, the the, the Spencer Mansion incident, Jill and Barry go to a college campus where there's a legitimate werewolf tearing people up and eating them. Yeah, that All can't right, so, be so you're telling that's, me that's fucking stupid. magic exists in Resident Evil. So, so, so I'm let telling me get, you, it exists. Let me get this straight. We have a world with, um, with werewolves and vampires. We have this vampire who would just as soon eat you, but a whole bunch of people are just tripping over themselves because this vampire is hot. Gee, where have I heard this before? Twilight. <laughs> oh my god, you asshole! Yeah, Twilight. My money, my money, my money is my money is her on her being a tyrant. That's me calling this. So here's I'm the thing. I think you're wrong? half right. I think I think I, she's going to be the mold equivalent of a tyrant. Yeah. Um, because, but what's interesting to me is that you, I think you're right in that she's not a full tyrant because the big thing about tyrants was they have no emotions. They have no mental processes. And they are utterly sexless to make ooh. them more effective killing machines. That's, that's not true. That's not true. Do you remember... Um, William Birkin had kind of some stuff going on. He wasn't a tyrant, though. He was, was like a Sort of, yeah. I mean, he was the G-virus equivalent he was of a, a tyrant. Muta- yeah, the G-virus was a mutation of the T-virus. Yeah, so he was basically that... He, he was the G-virus tyrant equivalent. Mm-hmm. Basically. Yeah, right. Uh, Let me rephrase that. Just because they're not supposed to have emotions doesn't mean that it works all the time. Right. Because remember, this runs on this runs on horror movie logic. Well, you've also seen what happens with other things, and and here's the thing: you're saying tyrant. That's why I don't think she's a proper tyrant. I think she might be a molded tyrant because look at how with the T virus, Mister X and Nemesis, yeah, emotionless killing machines. You're absolutely right. But Las Plagas and Resident Evil Four, you got three different villains that all have emotion. Uh, in Resident Evil Five, you got Ouroboros. Wesker gets it, and he's like, you know, flipping out. As is Irving, uh, the guy he infects first. Resident Evil Six, they got different viruses where people maintain their emotion. Resident right. Evil Seven, the Baker family maintains their mentality to some extent. Well, that's they just become the, twisted the, versions of themselves, and that's why I think it's a molded thing. Because well, one, Wesker didn't have the T virus. Wesker had the progenitor virus. No, he also had Ouroboros at the end of the game. Well, uh, he, well true, no, true. but in the in the in the beginning, he had the progenitor virus. So Wesker well, was just both sick with everything. Like, because you remember, uh, Kinda. Code Veronica. Okay, so Wesker. Yeah. yeah. So Wesker's whole deal is the reason. Wesker's whole deal is that I want you to envision the characters of Resident Evil, Tino. They are mostly normal people who are fighting horrible monsters using training, firearms, whatever they can get their hands on. Wesker has actual anime powers. Also, uh, Dave, to. S- you're actually wrong as well about one thing. 
Alexia mm-hmm. Ashford was a tyrant, technically speaking. Technically, yes. And she maintained her emotion until she mutated to the second form. Right. So who knows what will happen to Lady Dim- Dimitri? So here's to- here's my theory on that, and this is what I want to talk about with everyone simping over her. Uh, I'm not simping over her. I mean, she's hot, but... I, don't I haven't really even seen the much. trailer. I only here's know about thing. her because of the memes. When, when, when she eventually turns, and she will turn, it's going to get mm-hmm. ugly. Uh, exhibit A, I'm going to point to Marguerite from Resident Evil 7 and her spider diaper. <laughs> you know that that was gross. Yeah. Somebody and, got off on it, dude. No. No. So, <laughs> now I'll happily share all the memes about people simping for Lady Demetrescu. I think that's funny as hell. But all these people who are thirsting over her Boy, when she transforms, are they in for a rough time. <laughs> Dude, I gotta find the meme. It's like a clip from a cartoon from, like, the uh, early uh, aughts. I can't remember the cartoon. I think it was, like, uh, maybe an American Dragon or something. But it's some dude who's, like, at a kissing booth, and he's like, all right, lady, pucker up. And the woman turns into, like, this xenomorph double mouth nightmare, and the dude just has this surprised look on his face, and then he goes, <laughs> jackpot. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that one. Oh, uh, um, I think I've seen a meme of that. So here's what I've also seen from other things, not just from the demo about Resident Evil 8. There's apparently a merchant again. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's like this, a different guy. Yeah, he's a he's a fat dude in a cart. Yeah. Um, where apparently there's already like an article about like, oh, that's like fat shaming or something. I'm like, I mean, I th- it's that's bait, dude. That's not real. Games I, journalists I have so. nothing to write about. Yeah. yeah. I, I I honestly think yeah. this game is going to be big and long. I hope because, so. Because it like the scale of it just like looks unless they gate the hell out of the game or like you can only go to certain parts i think this game is going to be really big and long and there's going to be a lot of stuff to do so that yeah. that'll be cool are you suggesting I mean, that it's going to be like open world or something no i don't want to no. say i don't want to say that it's open world but i think that there's open just going to be a lot the of world is just cover. castlevania i'll put it this way tino it it'll be semi open world the way like in resident evil 4 until you get past that progress blocker and go to the next new area, like, you could backtrack a lot. Yeah. It, um, it'll be Metroid-like. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, well, I haven't played uh, Metroid I, I either, know. but I think I understand what you're getting at. <laughs> I mean, I don't know Basically, sure. it's a giant open world, and you're lack, and you have to beat bosses to progress to other spaces of the open world. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, think, about right. I think Resident Evil will do that. Yeah, because the bosses will give you abilities to access larger parts of the world yeah, yeah. okay yeah. yeah that makes sense like um, the door like you'll see the door but the door will just be out of reach it'll be like hey it drops the key now you can go to the new area it's like that now yeah there's okay. there's something that um uh, i have a theory about and i want to float this by everyone as well so resident evil 8 is coming out and they announced that they're going to be remaking resident evil 4 what if Resident Evil 8 is the Resident Evil 4 remake? That would be interesting and impressive. I don't like Resident Evil 4. I have wow. no opinion. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm thinking it's going to be like that because the, the, the setting's very similar. They're doing that thing with the merchant. You know, granted, different merchant, but they're still having a merchant system. Uh, so I'm interested to see how that comes into play. The areas in 8 are very reminiscent from a lot of the early areas in 4. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because it's the same kind of architecture. It's, yeah. It's it's the crazy gothic shit. Resident Evil 8 may as well take place in Castlevania. Basically. Resident Evil, Tino, for you, Resident Evil 8 may as well take place in Ravenloft. Right. Well, I, I know what Castlevania is. Not having played it, but I knew that it was based off of Ravenloft, or Ravenloft was based I... off of it, which, whichever direction it went, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think yeah. if there if this, first one if this is going to be a remake of four, I'm this that's a that's a bit of a stretch, in my yeah, opinion. I think so. It's a bit of a it's. I I get where you're want... going with it, but I, I don't really see it. I, it would I have mean, to be like a total retelling. Well, I'm uh, not. It would be I'm a not, retelling. I'm not saying that my theory is 100 percent accurate. I may be one percent wrong on this one, guys. But um, 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you mean you may be 1% correct anyway. You know, 1%. Whatever mechanics 1%. do show up in this game will show up in RE4 remake. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, so this is effectively the RE4 remake tech demo. I, I, don't, think, I don't think they need to remake RE4. I think that game was made for, uh, perfectly, you know, cl- yeah, close no, enough I, I, that we don't I need find it. An R- I find an RE4 remake to be unnecessary at this time. I would actually like a new Dino Crisis game. I would take a. We new all Dino would, Crisis. dude. But Dino Crisis is a dead fucking franchise. Yeah, I know. They can, and, they can bring and for it back. Tino, Dino Crisis is just Resident Evil, but the instead of zombies, it's dinosaurs. I think That's we had this great. discussion. Yeah, we, we talked about that last yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dino Crisis is one of those games that's dumb as hell, and I love it. So, I guess based on on all of this, for Resident Evil Eight, I think Steve's probably the most knowledgeable aside from me here. But I'm gonna get everyone's imp- opinion. What is one thing you would like to see in Resident Evil 8, and what is one thing that you think would kill that game, like make it just garbage? So I'll start. Oh, I have an answer for that one. I, I'm, if I may. Well, yeah, that's why I'm asking the question. <laughs> Great. Okay, so you know that scene where Mia dies? Yeah. It's a fake out. She immediately resurrects, and all of a sudden, we leave Ethan's perspective. Oh my God, Ethan has a model. Wait, why is the camera flying into Mia's head? As Lady Dimitriescu pulls out Ethan's heart and eats it in front of you, and you play the entire game as me. The garbage game immediately. Uh, I I'd have to think about it because I don't know. The, there were a lot of things I didn't like about RE7, and if they're using the same type of system in terms of you know uh you know the inventory system and and healing and stuff like that, I. I I would need. I, I don't like that Ethan's back. Number one, because I don't care about Ethan at all. Uh, yeah. it, it would be cool if there were multiple perspectives. Like we meet a new character and we play as him or so her. So apparently that's what happens. Oh, is that what is that? Apparently what you're, saying? you're apparently you only play forty percent of the game as Ethan. Okay. What I've heard. Oh God! If I, if I'm fucking right. I am sorry. Oh, as long as it's not like that Code Veronica shit where, like, you, you play as Chris for, like, the rest of the game. That was stupid. I didn't like that at all. Yeah, that yeah. that would... Chris Redfield needs to be one of the villains of the game. I don't... Not in the se- I... not in the sense that he's infected, but in the sense of you're infected, and Chris, after however many decades of doing this, is like, it is literally faster for me to put a bullet in your head than it is for me to get you a cure. I am old, tired, broken, and done. I really, I would kill to see that. I really don't like that. Red, that um, Chris Redfield has become Goku, uh, the guy that always has to come in and save everyone. I hate that. Yeah, that, yeah. I, that's I, why that I want really him to be broken. Out. That's why I want him to be broken because I want this to be. What is the natural consequence of literally fighting this bio terror war for the better part of three decades? Yeah, I will say this. You go I, ins- you'd go crazy. I, I will say this. I I don't want any of the original characters in Resident Evil Eight. I I don't. I because they've already made their bed. They have to. They have to ride this out. Like just keep all those original characters away and so build me, new characters that are interesting. Well, let me and someone you want to enjoy and know what happens to them. Well, let me let me ask just as 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 a possible stipulation of that, Steve. How would you feel about someone like Rebecca Chambers or Sherry Birkin making an appearance in eight, considering how little we've seen of them throughout the series general? No, I, I okay. really think I think they have to leave that part of the franchise alone. It just has to be done. Like you can't keep fucking bringing back Luke Skywalker. You know what I'm saying? Like just fucking no, I hear leave you. him. Let him go, dude. <laughs> you see. Now, you see, I disagree with Steve. I agree on the let Luke Skywalker go thing, because that's, to me, Chris Redfield. That being said, a lot of characters that we haven't seen in for fucking ever... Where's Claire? Where's Sherry? She, Claire's doing where's... Greenpeace stuff, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and the last time we saw for that... It's Resident Evil Revelations 2. Island. Right. Yeah. So she's technically there's had, one. like, a pretty recent representation in a game. Yeah, there, there's technically they were still the cherry in RE6. Yeah, but I'm talking about. Here's the thing: Claire has had Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil Code Veronica, Resident Evil uh, Revelations 2, and I think 
two CGI movies, plus she's going to be in the new yeah. CGI movie, and she's going to be in the new so, live action movie. Uh, right. So more than Claire, though, what the hell's Rebecca been doing? That's why I said to Steve, Sherry yeah. or Rebecca. I, I mean, I, I know Rebecca's been in one of the movies as like some kind of teacher of virology at like the University of Sydney or some nonsense. Th- this this is why I'm saying that if Resident Evil Seven is going to be like Star Wars Episode Seven where they have new characters and they want to make them interesting and you invest your emotions in them. I think they, you know, they've already made the decision to move away from the formula that they're so used to and go a different way. I think they need to do that with the characters too. So I'm like, like I said, I'm not interested in seeing any of the old characters. I like to see new ones and interesting ones. So, you know, I, I, I like that this, this whole vampire thing, I'm I'm all about that. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. I would like to see the knife glitch implemented as a legitimate gameplay mechanic as well oh, as I, in the I, I want to see that as a cheat. <laughs> I, I want to see that as a cheat. Like you just put it in the console on the PC version and you get it. You, just... <laughs> you know, I mean, it, to you, it is it is the blue umbrella's new super tech knife that is actually an exoskeleton knife. No, yeah, it's like the it's the Evangelion knife. The one that just, like, vibrates and shit. <laughs> <laughs> this knife is only second to the lance that pierced Jesus. Yes. The moment you pick up the tech knife, like, Revolver Ocelot from Metal Gear Solid comes out and goes, Hey, I'm here to teach you about that knife. And you go, what the fuck? This yeah. knife Who is the you? best knife ever. <laughs> the best uh, knife ever made. I... So I'm going to push back a little bit on what Steve said. I wouldn't... I actually like Dave's idea that where... Like, you get some kind of infection, and Chris is a de facto villain to you because he's just trying to do his job of of kill you, but you're trying to survive and and cure yourself. At the very end of the game, it would be like you find the cure, and you inject yourself with it just before Chris is about to kill you, and Chris is like, ugh. It, Fine. Okay. Job done. Yeah. Thank God I didn't have to shoot you. And this. if that, and, but and if they wa- did that, and, and they made that away. like where, but if they do that and they make it where Chris retires, like that's his retirement thing, I'd be yeah. fine with that. What the like the one the one last job thing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I, if I see Chris Redfield in this in this game, I'm just gonna roll my eyes. He's in it. Christ. What? He was in the He's trailer. in it. He shoots Mia. <laughs> I don't want him to be. I don't want him to be a central part of the game, though. He's, he's like, he is. He's not only there. He's built like he looks like he's wide. I don't want like, him he's there. He looks like he's stacked. He's in the game. He I, kills your wife and steals your child. But I want that to just be over. Like, okay, let's do another no. thing. Because guess what, Steve? The plot of the game initially is you have to get your child back. And, oh, where did Chris take my child? Oh, into Lady Dimitrescu's castle. I guess we'll find out the mystery, gang. Well, it's a good thing I didn't so pre-order I... the game. <laughs> so there's one thing I want to point I out did. about Lady Dimitrescu that I do love. And that is her name. And what she is. Because Lady Dimitrescu is a Capcom reference. There is a fighting game called Darkstalkers in the West. Mm-hmm. That is called, I think, simply Vampire in Japan. And the main character of this game is a vampire lord with the craziest character design for a fucking vampire lord I've ever seen. And his name is Dimitri. Let me find a picture of Dimitri oh, and I'll post it in the chat. <laughs> Lady Dimitri- if The best reference that Capcom could do is that when you fight Lemmy- Lady Dimitrescu, she has some of his moveset. <laughs> that would be pretty interesting, I will admit. Which is Secret not crossover? good for you because remember, well, no. So here's the thing: Resident Evil has already crossed over with some fighting games. Albert Wesker practically had a character action slash fighting game move set, which made fighting him a nightmare. <laughs> um, Dimitri Darkstalkers. Hold on, Dimitri Maximoff is his name. I want you to look at him because he looks like a combination of a Phoenix Wright character and a Devil May Cry character. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that's yep. that's like, that's not even that's in the same right. galaxy as Subtle. Oh, no. <laughs> this dude is not supposed to be Subtle. Not at all. Do- Darkstalkers is the game Morrigan comes from, Will. 
No, oh, wow. I, the big I succubus? I, I know, yeah. Okay, and so Felicia definitely the a Japan Catgirl. creation. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, Look at that fucker. I've played Dark Darkstalkers, dude. Good. Then you know what the shit I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I've played Darkstalkers, too. By the way, I want to point something out to Tina about Lady Demetrescu and, and things that are going on about the internet and her. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's the internet's being the internet. I'm not surprised. Well, but... well here's the thing. She's been uh, revealed to be nine and a half feet tall, which makes her taller than both Mr. X and the Nemesis. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Her feet are 44 centimeters or 17.3 inches long, which is <laughs> longer. Uh, it's almost double the average woman's uh, shoe size, and it beats the current Guinness World Record holder of the women's largest feet by four centimeters, that individual being uh, Jason Rodriguez. I might be mispronouncing that, so I apologize. And... Because Capcom felt you needed to know, her panties are white. Yeah, Japan. Capcom. Japan. Now they're just Capcom, now they're just leaning into the meat. The, mo- yeah, the yeah. moment Cap- the moment you knew that Capcom knew was when they released that standee. The standee, the information about her underwear, and then the trailer where. Uh, oh, hold on, wait. Uh, from uh, April third, twenty twenty one, people be talking about Lady Demetrescu's fat ass is a an article headline about how, about how uh, statuesque she is, we'll say. Mm-hmm. That's an that article headline? It. Yes. And the person who wrote it calls themselves a journalist? No. <laughs> Journalism has been dead for a while. Oh, I, I don't know I if know. you got the memo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we could, we could do that job, say, basically. So I will say this. The one thing that we will know, the true Japan piece of information that you need is her three sizes. Uh, yeah, and, blo- height, and blood type. Oh. Her height, her width, and her bust size. Oh, Christ. I, I, thought, then, I, I, thought, I thought you were going to say her... Lady, I thought you were going to say bust hips her waist. Her to say is my, my uh, three sizes are heat, meat, su, and then she stabs you in the chest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Himitsu is Japanese for secret, Tino. You know? Here's oh. here's a uh, here's a fun. Um, it's a pun. Here's I, here's I, some I, fun I headlines. It. Resident Evil Eight comes to Fallout Four with this Lady Demetrescu outfit mod. Resident Evil Village's Lady Demetrescu towers in an ad on a double decker bus. Let's see more fun headlines. But has she been uh, modded to Skyrim yet? Because if not, then she doesn't exist. The the best Resident she, Evil Village Lady Demetrescu they can pull her cosplays. Model for RE8, they will. Uh, the evolution of Lady Demetrescu and her daughters. Uh, six foot nine cosplaying Olympian is now Resident Evil's tall vampire lady. <laughs> <laughs> Capcom starts promoting Resident Evil Village with life size Lady Demetrescu. Yes, there it is. That's the standee. Uh. Uh, the first headline about Resident Evil 8 that isn't about Lady Demetrescu. I had to go to page two of the Google results for this one. Resident Evil Village animals can be hunted and eaten to make Ethan stronger. Nice. Oh, yeah. This is going full open world. This is going to be interesting. Uh, we've done the... Le- the- oh, no, wait. Here's here's an article from the ga- uh, the Gamer. We've done the math. Letting Lady Demetrescu stand on your chest will definitely kill you. The fall of Rome is happening again. We're witnessing it right now. <laughs> yeah. That's what makes Lady Demetrescu Let a cult burn. leader. Uh Fortnite survey suggests crossover of Resident Evil 8's Lady Demetrescu. Uh Lady Demetrescu turns boring bus journey into the ride of your life. Uh All of these, I want you to know, Tino, all of these are PR copy. Capcom is intentionally doing all this because they know. Yeah. Resident Evil Village's PC specs are less scary than Lady Demichescu. <laughs> oh, yeah, Everything's I ne- about her! <laughs> oh, I, ne- I never saw the PC specs. 
Oh, uh, hold on. Let me um. I want to take that, a look. That might be interesting. That does not surprise. So RE engine is impressive to me because let's go back to the technical shit. Oh, uh, let's let's because have fun it's with this. because it shouldn't be as low impact as it is, but it is. Well, if you have a purpose built engine, then it's going to be lower overhead than a mass market engine like Unreal or Unity. Yeah, absolutely. You got to understand though. So the way that RE engine works is that they actually scan in textures. Like they take like real life textures and they scan them into the engine. Oh right. yeah. So utilize. Oh yeah. Well, so that's, Steve, I mean that's that's standard procedure for games these days. I mean that they, they're not just they're not just scanning in textures. They're doing photogrammetry of real places and three D scanning stuff and getting high yeah. geometry like um, like models from people that. in the people that, that in light the RE shit. engine look. Yeah, you don't even need lidar. You like can just do that from a series uh, a series of pictures. Like I could take my 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 D, my my SLR and then go out and then walk around a stump in the forest, put it into a photogrammetry software and then boom, I would have something that would be high enough quality to put into a game or even yeah. or even a CGI film. Mm -hmm. So, guys, for uh for the specs cuz uh I know Steve said he might be interested in this. For the CPU requirement, they're recommending an Intel Core i5-7500 or an AMD Ryzen 3 1200. Well, that that's her minimum. Yeah. Uh, no, that, that's what this article is. It's just the minimum spec you need. Oh, I, I just I just went to Steam's page. Oh. Because it shows the minimum and the recommended. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Look, I'm just trying to help you, bro. Cutting me off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, oh, like, man. not that not that it really bothers me now since I built a new computer. Like, I'm just I'm balling yeah. now. I, mean, <laughs> I, I I ain't got to care for the also, next like five years. <laughs> I mean, Will, you're, you're right about that. I just saw an image on this article yeah. that is Chris Redfield's face superimposed with a wolf. Right. New theory: Chris Redfield's a werewolf. I feel like you know what? Now that we're talking about this. I feel like Resident Evil 8 is just going to, you know, devolve into a big game of Are You a Werewolf? <laughs> and at, at the end of each day, you, Lady Dimitrescu, her three daughters, Chris Redfield, and whoever else, like the merchant or whoever, they, they show up, and it's like that thing where it's like, all right, all the no everyone put your heads down, werewolves, put your heads up and tell us who you're going to kill in the night by pointing, and that's how the game's going to go. Oh, gosh. <laughs> So you're basically saying Resident Evil 8's just going to be Among Us 2. I mean... Maybe. Chris Redfield is acting a little sus, bro. <laughs> <laughs> little sus. Little sus. Uh, oh, man. I want to find oh, the Lord. one article real fast because there's something here. Uh... Which is like the, the best thing um because apparently capcom had no idea that the internet would fall in love with lady demetrescu bullshit and now they are fully embracing it they are lying through their fucking teeth oh I, they i'm sure they are the moment she rolled out of the goddamn design works i have i have a question uh, uh, uh is, is capcom did capcom also make bayonetta no. No. no so don't. actually, there Pla is Platinum a connection. So, yeah. Platinum Games. So okay. I'll explain the. Okay. There is a connection, though. It was there based on something that Will said, and uh, what I remember about his desktop screensaver from college. So. Whoa. So now, now. there is a connection. I don't. I don't want Please, Natalie don't hearing all this sensitive this. information. <laughs> <laughs> Tino throwing so, me right under the. We're gonna have to bleep a lot of things in this podcast, buddy. <laughs> so the connection with that is that um. The guys who made the original Devil May Cry left Capcom. And this was the guy who made the original Resident Evil 2, like everything. His name's Hideki Kamiya. He helped found Platinum Games. Okay. Platinum Games' first game was Bayonetta, which is based off of a whole bunch of concepts from Devil May Cry that they didn't get to use. Okay. So in short, yes, Bayonetta was designed by ex-Capcom staff. Okay, okay. I I I figured there probably had to be a connection. So, there is, except Bayonetta is a Sega, is a Sega character through and through. 
Which is why her game is full of the weirdest Sonic the Hedgehog references. Like rings. <laughs> Yeah. Not just the rings, but literally like the funeral you're attending in the opening of Bayonetta is for a, a mob hitman named Eggman the Destroyer. Yep. <laughs> uh, um, they also made Nier Automata, which is a really nice game. Yeah. yeah it's oh, yeah. Platinum great. made a lot of things. Yeah. Platinum is a great studio. Yeah. Hey, Invest finally a game I've actually games. played. <laughs> so, so all that awesome combat in Nier Automata, you know, that was. That, there are there are literally bayonetta moves in near automata. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've I've the heard the overclock, that. which is great. The overclock chip is literally her signature ability. Yeah, okay, it's amazing. So, uh, as a final note for this podcast and on the the same topic of games, uh, you guys may have heard that uh, PlayStation Network store support and all that other stuff is ending for the PlayStation 3, PlayStation Portable, and PlayStation Vita. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, now. I initially was going to come up with a, like, you know, like a wish list of, like, if you have a PS3 or something, here's the games you should pick up. Uh, no. Except no. what happened? What did PS... What did Sony fuck up then? Oh! Oh! D- do you want to know, Dave? I no no I know, but I want you to tell the audience. Dave, that I was playing along with the bit. Come on, you gotta work oh, with fine. me. Fine, and the normie. She will over tell here in me. The corner. <laughs> sure. So here's the thing: I don't understand technology. I don't. I don't know why you need to have a little PRAM battery or CMOS battery, whatever the hell you want to call it, in a motherboard to store your BIOS settings. Why can't you just have that as or part the of the power supply? Yeah. Oh my God. Well, just have like a it rechargeable is. one that hooks into the power supply. That's all you need. I, I don't. I don't get it. But whatever. Fine. If that's in there and that's how it works, it's how it works. Well, works. on July second oh this year, twenty twenty one, uh, your PlayStation three will no longer be able to like connect to the PlayStation Network in any way. Which means that if you wanna, if you wanted to buy any games off the PlayStation Store, like. Resident Evil's 1, 2, and 3, Parasite Eve 1 and 2, the Dino Crisis games, Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9. Now would have been the time to do it, and I would have given you a nice rundown of all the games there and what games I'm going to get on my PS3. Here's the problem. However. Yes, here's the problem. Once support for that, you know, once support for the PS3 ends, you better pray that you're... PRAM battery never dies. Because the second it does, your system settings, it's going to get out of sync with the date and time. And even if you replace that battery, your your PS3 will be like, well, in order to play these games, we have to connect to the PlayStation Network and sync uh... the date and time. And the second that it can't do that, it locks you out of these games that you bought. See, this is this yep. is why I hate not just games, but any software that is dependent on an internet connection, it, on an internet connection in order to work. But it's not actually; it doesn't have any processes that are actually running in the cloud. It just needs a connection because that's how it was designed to work. Yeah. I consider yeah. that to be total it is malarkey. Shit like this. It is shit like this that turns piracy from a matter of access to a matter of preservation. There is now a moral obligation to pilot the pirate the entire PS3 library solely though so those games can serve, exist in some form. Yeah. I yeah. would replace the battery now to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I'm going no, to. That's the Don't problem. get me wrong. If you try to replace it, it breaks. No, no. If you like, do it now, if you do it now, it's fine. Because it could reconnect to the the network. Yeah, it'll but, res- it'll resync the time. But and all that. so here's so, the thing. So, to, so today is April 14th, 2021. If I replace that PRAM battery now, or even in June of this year, before they cut off support, I could resync my PS3 and everything's going to be fine. The problem is, if I don't replace it now, uh, and it dies, like, in August, I'm screwed. And even if I do replace it, like, right before support's cut off, as soon as that new battery dies, I- I'm screwed. Unless I I mod my PS3, so so uh the as a non PS3 owner uh, the PRAM battery is that something that's hot swappable or are we talking about like 
go opening up your case and like soldering stuff. It, opening is, attached up your case. Them, it is attached to the motherboard. Yeah. Oh, but wow. here's here's the, here's the thing. By the time that battery dies, you're not gonna care about PS3 anymore. Uh, that's just by the that's time just that battery. I, that's just what I think. I mean, What's maybe what's supposed but... to happen is that by the time that battery dies, all of all of leadership at Sony, enough time will have passed that enough, all the leadership at Sony will have changed. And they'll be like, come check out the PS3 Greatest Hits collection on PlayStation 10. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, well, just think yeah. about all the SNES batteries in the world that still work. Like, my, like my Earthbound save still works. Well, yeah. you know, the older the hardware yeah. is, the more dependable it usually is. But yeah, I mean, yeah, but, sure. but I, because I'm, there's less planned obsolescence bullshit. In sure. there. I'm, I'm yeah. wondering well, how much um, I, like I'm, I'm wondering if Sony will eventually do what Nintendo did and re-release a lot of their stuff on uh, a later console. That is the, I had, Tino, I, I would assure hope so. you, maybe, that maybe is not. the eventual plan. Tino, oh. the reason they're shutting this down is because they don't want to pay to maintain the servers anymore. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I understand that. I'm saying that, Which is that, perfectly you know, like, understandable. It, it probably will not be lost forever. It just might be not immediately that's not the but, you know that's is, not the entire issue does not end up in that store in the future is lost forever mm. and tino tino here's the other part yeah. of it that's not the entire issue the issue is let's say even if i went on sales i buy like 300 dollars worth of downloadable games on my ps3 you know and i'm talking about like all the classic resident evils the the, the ps1 era of final fantasies parasite eve all that good stuff the issue isn't that I can't get it again in the future in a digital format. The issue is I paid $300 for all these games that eventually I will be locked out from accessing. And it's not like, oh, like, like here's two examples of what Sony could do like to, to help you with this that I would be like, okay, this is no longer an issue. Uh, it's It's been solved. One, either announce that, hey, we're going to have an end-of-life support patch before we disconnect, like, the PS3 from the thing that erases this issue where even if it can't sync up and your PRAM battery dies, you could always access your old content. Right. Yeah. We'll or two, that. hey, uh, that may be happening, but we're going to introduce this new thing where you could transfer all these downloaded games from your PS3 onto your PS4 or PS5 or whatever it is. And if that, if they do one of those two things, this isn't an issue. This is a non-issue at that point. The problem is they haven't announced either such solution. And that's what's annoying because you don't know if they're going to do that. And the new management at Sony seems to, like, not just not care. Oh, they are hostile to pres- They are actively hostile to preservation. Not just that. They're, they're, they're trying to kill off any and all backwards compatibility. So to him, the PS3 is everything he hates. Because it's fully backwards compatible with everything that came before. Yeah, well, yeah, it is insane. Yeah, I mean, th- this is this is one of the reasons that I'm not as big of a gamer as I otherwise might be. First of all, I fill my time with all kinds of crazy projects, but also just because you know, there's there's a lot of of stuff that I would pay for that would just go down the drain because eventually there would be this planned obsolescence that, that I couldn't do yeah. anything about. So well. It is it is insane that the person who that the people running Sony right now are letting this happen yeah. because frankly there's literally plans laid out by Microsoft by their biggest competitors by Nintendo and Microsoft to profit off of their old titles. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, and the fact that the Go ahead. The fact that they're willing to let their library effectively expire is insane. The fact that they didn't learn from the problems that happened with like Final Fantasy VIII or Silent Hill 2 where hey we don't have the source code for this stuff anymore yeah we don't have the master anymore we 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 might want to like take better care to not have this happen again piracy is no longer a, a piracy is now a moral obligation towards preservation and and that's the sad thing is that like i always supported the official release as opposed to pirating anything um like i literally like when i saw people in the game room at temple using that like weird nintendo ds cart to have like every game 
I bought all my games. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I may be a sucker because I'm, I'm, you know, you spent twenty dollars and you're getting every game. I'm paying forty dollars oh. per game, but I want to support the official release. That's that's how I was. Uh now I may still end up buying this stuff off of PSN, but it'll be the last time I ever do. And I I can tell you right now, I'm gonna get my PS3 hacked so that after it, it's no longer connected to PSN, oh, I don't lose my content. So I'm As not doing should. it. Listen, I'm not doing it to steal a game. I'm doing it to get what I paid for. And that's so, what listen, annoys me old, is that I have to. Old, yeah, I have to go through a measure that I otherwise wouldn't have done in order to access something that I legally acquired. And that's the issue. And the other thing is, so, this is what's crazy. On well, what, I gotta, I gotta. Get all right, go ahead. Pirate. There's an old adage. Piracy is not a theft issue, it is an access issue. People will not pirate if they have a way to get their hands on things legally. They only pirate unless they can't afford it, or more likely, it's not available in it's not available locally. That's yeah. why back in the early aughts, fan subs for anime were everywhere. Why? Because there wasn't legal streaming services. There was not yeah. any means by which to watch these shows. Without using BitTorrent, mm-hmm. if you were in not in Japan, right? Um, these days, in this age of grand access, we are encountering a new problem, which is, oh hey, these games that you have fond memories of from ten years ago, they're gone. Yeah. Well, well, you you don't you don't own anything anymore, especially if it's not a physical, you know. The purchase. I. That's why I buy physical stuff. To get, yeah, yeah. I make yeah. an effort to get my hands on physical discs and cards every chance that, I get. That's why when we go to New York, hey, I'm buying the Dino Crisis game physical copy. Yeah, well, you know the 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 thing about like if everything you get is through a subscription and and it's all digital and it all exists in the cloud, you're not a customer. You're cattle, basically, in terms of yeah. cash flow. Um, sure, you're a revenue and, stream. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, as much as I can, you know, whether whether we're talking about discs or 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 movies or or books or games, I try to I always try to get a hold of a physical copy because I know that no matter what happens to the wider world, I still have what I bought. And as long as yep. like if it's if it's something digital, if it's like a DVD or or a game or something, as long as I have hardware that can still physically play it, then I still have it, you know, like and, I, I still have a, like, you, you can't see it, but like right up here, I've got like an entire, you know, tower full of, full of stuff. And one of the things that's on it is a VHS player. Cause I still have VHSs, you know, yeah. and I've digitized mm. most of them because, you know, those magnetically degrade over time. But like, you know, it, like I would rather keep stuff around rather than be like, Oh wow. Why did Netflix get rid of it? Oh, that's such a shame. It's like, no, mm-hmm. I paid for it. I want to have it. You know, that's yeah. why I bought the entire, you know, 20 disc set of Battlestar Galactica because it was on Netflix. It was off Netflix. It was that, 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 you know, like who there, there will come a time in, in, on which it's available for the last time, unless you have it. So yeah. mm-hmm. sure. to, look, Steve, you'll appreciate this quote. I don't want to rent. I want to own. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an Aqua Team quote. Master Shake says it. It's yeah. never been more applicable. Sounds like a name. And here's, quote. <laughs> well, hold on. Here's the other thing. And and Tino, to to address your mm. point, part of what, like now, I'll I'll say this: if getting the physical copies of games like Resident Evil Three or uh, Parasite Eve, if if we could somehow go back in a time machine to like the late '90s when that was readily available, oh. I'd be going with thousands of dollars. I'd buy like 20 copies of each game. But when I went to pick up the original Resident Evil, or not the original Resident Evil, the original Silent Hill, um, I paid $85 for a used game. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. people are, are making big profits off this stuff. Now, if I see, now, like, I'll see if you look at like the original Resident Evil games, even if it's the greatest hits collection, they're going online for like 150 200 bucks. Uh-huh. Uh if I could find a good condition version of them for 50 or under, I instantly buy. Because I know if I don't jump on it, it's gone. I literally found Well, well hold on. 
I literally found a copy of Rule of Rose for under a hundred dollars. That's holy that, that's shit. And I really? and I added it to my cart instead of hitting buy it now. Stupidly. So when I went to my cart, I immediately saw Yeah, not available. Because I someone else sniped. hit buy it now. Yeah, I got sniped. Yeah. And I'm like, mmm. Yeah. And, and the other part of it is. Well, the other part of it is that on, on Sony's Facebook page. Some dude had, like, the worst take. He's like, who even cares about PS3 anymore? Buy a PS5, and, and people were lighting him up. Like, someone said, like, oh, buy a PS5 that has the hard drive soldered to the the motherboard so it has, a, like, a, a timed life. Or, uh, oh. who cares about PS3? I don't know, maybe people who can't afford to buy the newer consoles. Or, uh, someone said... It is literally easier to get the COVID vaccine than it is to get a PS5. Yeah, and no, then, I mean, and then good, someone good someone else said, that, and this yeah. adds this adds to the issue, yeah. they said, oh, buy a PS th- uh, PS5 from the company that not only is this issue going to hit the PS3 with digital content, but it's going to hit the PS4 with both downloaded games and physical copies! Yeah. Guess what? One day your PS4 is going to be a brick. I don't care if it works fully. You won't be able to put a disc into it and play a game. You know why? Because eventually they'll shut down the server. No, but here's the thing. With a PS3, you could put the disc in and still play a game. You just can't access your digital content. With the PS4, because of how trophies work, you have to be connected to the internet to earn them. So... Here's the thing. It's not like where the PS4 is like, oh, you just don't earn the trophy if you're offline. No. The PS4 says, well, you know, you just can't play any games. Now, I've tested this, and I don't get fully how this works, but uh, I've been able to play my PS4 offline. In fact, that's how I played it when I first got it. But apparently, once they shut down like, the PSN for it, because the, the dude who did this, he's, like, some kind of hacker. He ran, like, a test where he managed to block some of the stuff, he, and he, he's the one who did, like, the same test scenario with uh, the PS3. So he runs his test. He couldn't play the digital games. Okay, that's what we get with the PS3. Then he tried putting in the disc, and it wouldn't work. It's It's the Matrix. They don't want you to do anything if you're not plugged into the system. Yeah. And it's like, well... Now, all of this can be solved with, like, end-of-life patches that, like, just say, okay, you don't check the time region for the PS3 to access digital content, or, yeah, once PS4 is off PSN, you don't need the trophy stuff, or whatever it is. They could literally fix it. The problem is, they're not making any such announcements. It's just, they could easily say, like, oh, guys, yeah, we've noticed this. We're going to handle it. Don't worry. You're going to be able to play all your games. And that immediately would earn them back a ton of goodwill because it's like, yeah, guys, we, it's an oversight. We didn't realize it when we came up with it at the time. Nah, but the guy who's running PlayStation, who's running Sony right now just has this eight boner for preservation. Yeah. So it's insane. So I don't make it literally insane. Yeah. Why, 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 uh, why lose out on the potential profits of, of all the remakes that people will have no choice but to buy. Oh, it's not even that. No, because Tino, you know what'll happen. Sony's future is new is new franchise. Tino, you know what'll happen, and and here here's why that's a terrible business. Well, I said I far. said I said remakes. I should have said re-releases. Like right. you know, uh, like well, a PS3 so it's not even, exclu- no, no, exclusive. Tino, that you it's must not even play on the PS5. Well, no, but but here's it's but, not even that. He just thinks that Sony needs new original franchises. But here's here's why that's even a terrible delete. strategy. What came before? Oh gosh. Okay. But <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah. like I said, it's insane. But here's why that's even a terrible strategy. I'm sure you guys remember during the PS3, Xbox 360 era where Microsoft was reigning supreme. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they started announcing the new consoles of PS4 and Xbox One. And in order to share games, you had to jump through all these hoops for Microsoft. Like, they made it almost impossible. <laughs> oh, yeah. And oh, then God, Sony yeah. put out a press release of, like, a video. How to share games on PS4. And they had two and guys right next dudes? to each other. The one guy hands the game to the other guy and says... Here you go. And the other guy says, thanks, friend. And it was so easy. And that catapulted the PS4 ahead of the Xbox One. And Sony dominated the last console cycle. Now, that was so... Now they're fucking... Now, here's the thing. Amazing thing happens when you give people freedom. I don't know why that's such a hard concept. (laughs) Microsoft backpedaled super hard after that. And they still lost a ton of ground 
from people who were like, well, you're only doing that because you literally just got called out. Like, why would we, how do we know you're not going to screw us in the future? Sony is getting called out and they're not even addressing it. And Microsoft literally just put out, like Microsoft saw the opportunity. They're like, you know, we just acquired Bethesda. The PS5 is really hard to acquire and they just had that hard drive issue. But oh my God, if, if we have backwards compatibility, we're going to win all over all these people. So I, I, I wasn't going to get a PS5. They want. Give the gamers what they want. Yeah. So here's the thing. I, mm-hmm. I, I didn't buy a PS4 or an Xbox One because I was going to wait till the, the pro version of the consoles came out. That was the first big thing that really made me start hating consoles when PS3 came out and then, oh, now it's the PS3 Pro or whatever. I was going to wait for the PS4 Pro until I won one from Taco Bell one night all drunk. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the only reason why I have a PS4. Uh, I... I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go into that story another time. Uh, but I wasn't going to buy a PS5, and I was going to get a PS5 because I'm thinking, like, all right, you know, I hear you could move PS4 games onto it, you could use a controller. Uh, I wasn't going to buy one because I was going to wait for the Pro version. Then I heard about the hard drive issue, and I was like, oh, oh, that's bad. I don't like that, like, because what I'm going to do with my PS4 is a hard drive swap. And then I'm hearing, like, wait a minute, my PS4 is going to be a brick. Why should I even hard drive swap it? Like, Mm -hmm. everything that Sony's doing is just pushing me away. And then Microsoft comes in and says, oh, yeah, full backwards compatibility, and we're we're trying to buy up all these companies to have exclusives. And I'm like, I have a bunch of Xbox 360 games that I'd love to replay, and if I could do that on the new Xbox, then why wouldn't I get it? And then there's just Nintendo. Sitting in its corner on its throne. Well, well Nintendo has just been making money hand over fist. Yeah, during yeah, COVID. They're, Nintendo they're pulled the same sh- with this kind of thing. Nintendo did pull the same shit with Sony in terms of that Super Mario Brothers thirty five. Oh yeah, that was really weird. I don't know that why. Was they weird, did except that. I think if you bought the game, you have it. Yeah, but like, I didn't want it. Number one, number one, I didn't want it because I played all those games and I don't need to play them again. So I, I, I just did, I did one and I went for it. I, yeah. I went for it when it was yeah, available. I just skipped over it. Uh, I don't care. That being said, though, Nintendo immediately is like, "Yeah, no, we know that sucks. Here, have Pac Man ninety nine for free." Oh yeah, <laughs> is, is that out now? Yeah, apparently Yo, it is. I gotta get that shit right now. <laughs> available to all, because that that so, looks really fun. I love that Steve literally reached over to grab his Switch. Yeah. yeah. I got it, man. I like that too. That's the th- so that's the thing. I'm a guy who is going to get a PS5 for series for several exclusives. I am like, is it even fucking worth it at this point? No. And the answer I keep coming back to is no. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll wait for the uh, re-release or whatever, and maybe they'll yeah, have a better hard drive I can thing. I, I can know. wait a few years for a re-release. Oh, yeah. My Switch is dead. Never mind. Yeah, but I can. There's, there's no yeah, point in trying to do anything few, with Sony I, now. I can wait a few years for the PS5 Pro or whatever the fuck it's going to be called. Yeah. Hold on, I want to find out. Uh, Maybe by then Sony will pull pull its head out of its ass. What what what's what's the name of the current Sony executive who hates game preservation? I can't remember I, his I fucking name. His name. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna like, look him up. I think we need to end the I want to say soon. Jamie Dimon, it, but that's not him. That's the dude who runs Chase. Is it is it Kenichiro Yoshida? Maybe. No, it's not on. It's not a. It's is it the American like side? One's PlayStation. Yeah, on the American side. Let me see. I'm going to look up his name real fast. Uh, Sony Japan's still in charge, though. Like they're the yeah. ones that make all the decisions. But if they're the letting this guy is, get away not with it, interfering with this, they're letting it happen. Yeah, yeah which is that, that's. Is it? Is it Neil Manowitz? No, that's not the dude. I'm trying to. I mean, this is it. this is highly surprising given how much Japan loves the secondhand market. It's just Tim? weird to me that they are so anti-preservation. Is it something Tim must Schaff? have fucking happened? Something must have fucking happened in Japan. I I guess so. I I just know that you know Japan still loves secondhand shops and stuff like that. Like. I think I, isn't I, the I, console isn't the console market like suffering like in the wake of mobile in Japan. 
Um, I'm not sure. I, I would have to ask uh, Evan about that. He would probably know. But the mobile market is Will, very yeah. strong. Will, if fan. you're searching the org charts of Sony right now... That's what I'm trying to do, yeah. I don't bother. Uh, we'll, we'll come up with it next time, but yeah. Uh, Steve's right, we should end the podcast. So I'm going to end it by saying, uh, Sony, you know what? I, I, hope, I hope you get everything you deserve from your just willingness to screw over every customer who supported you. That's all. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see yeah. what happens. I mean, yeah. they, they the, might these turn things it literally go. If they in turn cycles. it around, then 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 I still hope they get everything they, they deserve. If they turn it around, then I hope they get what they deserve. That's all. The thing is, they will turn it around. It's just a matter of when. Is it going to be next year? Or is it going to be ten years from now? These yeah. things literally change as executives or as people retire and different people take their job. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong, but we just... literally so... watch this cycle play out at Xbox. Oh, it's just frustrating. Yeah. The only reason oh, well. it seems it seems perilous to us is because we weren't old enough to appreciate it happening the last time. Hmm. Yeah. Sure. I mean you're not wrong. Yeah. Like Wow, well, almost that... two hours. Guys, we marathon tonight. Yeah. Oh, straight yeah. Up. <laughs> yeah. Long so, all right. Goodbye, America. Yeah. Wait. Are we ending? Yes, we're don't lie to me or I'll know. Yeah, don't lie to me or I'll know. Wait, 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 wait. Fuck Kingdom Hearts. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah Kingdom yeah, Hearts is terrible. Forgot. As a guy, we As almost forgot to hate on it again. Loves Kingdom Hearts, Steve, Steve, Steve. I must respond to someone who dearly loves Kingdom Hearts. Fuck Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck that game. Fuck I, that franchise. Oh, Sora's oh. dead, but not really. He'll be back in Kingdom Hearts Four. Yeah, Sora's no, no, wait. Sora is dead. That is the key to the plot of Kingdom Hearts Four. Sora's dead, and now he's going to go on an adventure while being dead. Yes, it's Kingdom Hearts Four. Welcome your new protagonist, uh, protagonist Kirito from Sword Art Online. <laughs> no, no, no. It's still Sora. It's just Sora's adventures. In the afterlife, in the equivalent of Kingdom Hearts Afterlife, which so is apparently, yeah, which is Shinjuku, which is, a, which is apparently oh Square, which is literally, I shit you not, it is a city called Quadratum, which is a synonym for Square. Yeah, figure that shit out. <laughs> I love how oh, we, Kino, I'm going to destroy your soul after we're done. I love how we stopped ending you already the podcast have five times. I, hold on, I have Taro information for Tino God. that I can't I, talk about in the podcast because it's related to FF14. Oh, I bro. love how we I love how we stopped ending the podcast to crap on Kingdom Hearts once well, more. Well, we couldn't we couldn't let it go like that. Yeah, we need I, that. I wasn't well, the podcast. well, if we're gonna continue with traditions, guys, wait, guys, if we're gonna continue with yeah, podcast we, we have traditions, have quote, quote what are we here. getting together to play Countdown Vampires? We need a set date. We're all getting vaccinated. I think it'll be fun. Oh wow! <laughs> Countdown vampires killed Will. Oh damn it! Oh, uh, he's back. Okay, <laughs> you Wait. you froze up. I think your computer was like, no, I don't want to listen to this guy talk about I Countdown know, well, vampires you know what? anymore. Countdown vampires sing this song, do da do da. We're gonna play it all night long, uh, all, all right. the do da day. I, I I'm done. That's it. That's it. We're <laughs> done. That's <laughs> it. I'm ending this recording. I'm ending this recording. Good night, everybody. Fucking Russell died. <laughs> Goodbye, America. Have a good night.